Welcome! In this video, I'm going to show you how you can get started with simple dependency injection in Phaser 3. We're going to look at how we can use dependency injection to inject components into our custom Phaser 3 scenes. So previously, we created a simple Phaser 3 uh, Zelda-like health bar where we just had this basic UI component. We went ahead and extended this component to use custom event emitters and custom health components to allow us to decouple some of our game logic and to allow us to have our logic split across multiple scenes. And so this was a really great enhancement for our health bar. But when we did this, we introduced a, uh, a number of dependencies and we, but when we did this, we ended up coupling our scene logic to components in our game. And so what I mean by this, is if we go ahead and just take a little quick look at our code, what we ended up doing is we created this game scene class. And so when we added in our health component, by importing it this way and referencing our component in our create method, we created a coupling between our class and our health component. And this isn't ideal because we want our code to be as decoupled as possible and we want to be able to reuse this across other projects. And so if I ever want to use this game scene class, I will have to have this health component in that library as well. Ideally, what we want to do is use dependency injection to inject the dependency that we're using here. And then that way we can reference our health component still, but the game class won't care what that health component is. As long as it has the method we're looking for here, defined, this logic will not break. It will just call the lose health method. And under the hood, the game class does not care that it's not this health component here. And so a really good example would be, um, let's say in our UI, we need to display the player's health, but we also need to display like enemy's health. And if we ever wanted to switch between the two, we would now have to import both of these components and modify them accordingly instead of being able to just inject those dependencies. Uh, so if you're not familiar with dependency injection, at a high level, all this is is just a technique where we can have an object receive the other objects that it depends on. So it's dependencies rather than us importing them or creating them directly ourselves. And typically what that would look like is we had passed to our constructor for this class the dependency that we need. And that's it. So at a high level, we just go ahead and inject or we pass it to when this class is instantiated, the dependencies that it needs. So there are other concepts tied to dependency injection, uh, such as inversion of control, dependency inversion, and other solid principles. But at its core, this is what dependency injection is. So what we're going to focus on is we're going to go ahead and refactor some of our classes and our components. So that way we can go ahead and inject our health component and our event emitter. So that way our code is more decoupled. All right. So if you missed the previous videos, uh, there'll be links down in the description down below, as well as on the screen now. There'll also be some links down in the description for where you can find the uh, starter source code uh, for this project. So if you can go ahead and download that code, if you already don't have it, and go ahead and extract it and open it in the ID of your choice. We'll go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to install our project dependencies. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get that started. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll open up our terminal. I'm going to run yarn install. Uh, if you're using the npm package manager, you can go ahead and do you can go ahead and run npm install, and this will also install your project dependencies. All right, and once that's done, uh, we'll go ahead and run npm run start or yarn start, and this will start our project. All right, and then so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and make a new folder under source, and we're just gonna call this a simple dependency injection. And what we're gonna go ahead and do is I'm just gonna copy all of the code from our interesting communication folder, and we're gonna place that in inside our simple dependency injection folder. Then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and make a new file uh, at the root of the project. We'll call this simple dependency injection.html. What we'll do is we're just going to copy the code from our interesting communication file as well. And we're just going to go ahead and change the name. So we're just going to go simple dependency injection. 
Then what we'll do is we're going to update the path to our code. So we'll do simple dependency injection and we'll point to the main.ts file. We'll go ahead and save. So what we'll do then is we'll go ahead and close this code. Let's go ahead and open up our simple dependency injection in our main.ts file. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just quickly review the code that we have. Uh, so in the main.ts file, uh, what we have here is we just have a very basic phaser 3 uh, game configuration. And we're importing a few custom scenes and we're providing that to our configuration here. So in our scenes, uh, we have two. One is UI. Uh, so this is a UI layer that sits on top of our game. Uh, basically, this renders our health bar here and it listens for events and it goes ahead and plays animations when those events are received. Our game class is just the root game itself and we just have a simple event listener. So when we click the scene, we go ahead and lose health in our health bar component. And inside our components folder, uh, we have two basic components. One is a health class, and this just has a simple max health. And when we receive events, we go ahead and when we, res when we call the lose health method, we go ahead and update our health. And then we event, then we emit events when this happens. Then in our events file, uh, we just have a custom phaser events event emitter that we're exporting out. All right, so to start using dependency injection in our game, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and open up our health component here. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get rid of our instantiation of a health component down here. Then what we'll do is we're gonna go ahead and update and export out our default class for health. So then what we're gonna do is in our health class, we're going to expect that we receive an instance of our event emitter so instead of importing from here, what we'll do is we'll create a new property on our health class, and we're just going to call this custom event emitter to phaser events event emitter. In our constructor, we're going to go ahead and do our custom event emitter. I'm going to copy this, and then here we'll do this dot our custom event emitter will equal the instance that was passed in. And we're gonna go ahead and set the type on this. And then what we need to do is instead of referencing the imported one we had before, we just need to reference this. So we'll do this, that custom event emitter. We'll call the emit method on that. Perfect. So, all right, so we just went ahead and refactored one of our classes to use dependency injection. All right, and then so and then next what we'll need to do is we'll do the same thing inside our scenes. So if we go ahead and open up our UI scene, what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna import our health class. So we're gonna use this for our type. And then for our constructor, we're going to receive a health component that has the type of health. And then we'll add a new property, call this health. And we'll do our type as health. And then what we just need to do in our constructor is we just need to go ahead and set that property to the value that comes into our constructor. All right, go ahead and save. What we'll do next is come down here. So instead of this dot health, it'll be this dot our private property health. All right, so then we'll do the same thing in our game class. So what we'll do is we'll come to our UI scene. I'm just going to copy some of our code here. Go ahead and paste that here. Then for our constructor. And then we just need to update our import. So we'll update our health class. And then we'll do this.health. Health. All right, so then finally, what we want to do is in our game configuration, we'll need to go ahead and update our uh, scene classes to have these uh, dependencies uh, when we construct our classes. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to remove our scenes from our scene configuration. Uh, so now Phaser uh, will not be aware of them. And what we can do is we can create instances of our scenes and then add these directly to Phaser. So what we're going to do is we're going to do game.scene and we're going to do add and we're going to add our game scene. And so what we'll do is we'll do a new instance of our game class. And then so now we need our health component. 
So what we'll do is above that, we're going to create our health components. We'll do const custom health component. We'll set this equal to our new health. And then this expects our custom event emitter. So what we'll do is above that, we'll do our custom emitter. We'll do equal to new phaser dot events dot event emitter. And now we can pass that to our health class. So we'll do our custom event emitter. Then down here in our game constructor, we're going to go ahead and pass in our custom health component. All right, and now we just need to do the same thing for our UI class. So we'll have UI, and we'll do new UI class. And then this will expect our custom event emitter, as well as our custom health component. Come back here. Oh, we just need to remove this, our import, and we'll need to add that here. So what we'll do is we're just going to copy some code from our health class that into our UI class. So we created our private property uh, for our custom event emitter, and then we'll update our constructor to expect both the custom event emitter and our health component. And then we just need to set that property. All right, so we'll go ahead and save. Go back to our main.ts file, and that's fixed. And now we just need to tell Phaser to actually start our game scene. Uh, now that we've added it to our configuration. So we'll do phaser, we'll do our game scene.start, and we'll go ahead and call game. All right, so now that we've done that, what we should be able to do is come into our events.ts file and let's remove our export for our custom event emitter. Oh, and we just need to fix one other thing. Inside our UI class, we need to update our reference. So we have custom event emitter and it looks like all of our other errors are gone. Perfect. So the last thing we need to do is we need to come into our config here and we just need to update uh, Vite to reference our new HTML file that we create. Uh, so to do that, we just need to do a new object, a key value pair. So we're just going to call this dependency injection example and now we need to point to our new html file so we'll do simple dependency injection html all right so now if we come to our browser we should be able to do is if we navigate to that path so if we do simple see all right our game scene should load and if we go ahead and click on our scenes, everything should still be functioning just like it was before. Go ahead and take a look at our console. We should still see our events are being emitted and received. Perfect. All right, with that, we now have a working example of how we can do simple dependency injection in Phaser 3 uh, by providing custom instances to our custom uh, Phaser 3 scenes. So at a high level, it doesn't look like we did much, but for as our game grows, um, dependency injection is going to offer us a lot of benefits. It enables to keep our code clean. It's going to become a lot easier to test because now we are not dependent on this class directly. Instead, we are dependent on the contract that that class offers. Um, it encourages decoupling in our code and just makes it a lot easier to maintain in the long term. And so now our code becomes much more easier to uh, decouple and reuse across our projects. And so this is a really basic example. And so one uh, good example would be, let's say if our phaser three game needs to save data. And so you can imagine uh, maybe when you have your game with just a single player, we can save data in the browser using Sessage or local uh, browser storage. And maybe at some point want to switch to over something like Firebase. Uh, so we could use Google Firebase to save data there. And if we implement our code in a way where they implemented the same contract, we wouldn't even need to modify most of our game classes here. Instead, we just inject that new storage method, and then we could just use that in our code, and we wouldn't have to do a bunch of refactoring here. 
we would just need to make sure that new implementation adheres to the same contract that we used previously. All right, with that, that brings this video to an end. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you really enjoyed the content. As a reminder, in the description of the video, there'll be links to the completed source code, as well as the previous videos uh, in this series. And there'll also be links on your screen now. Uh, if you're interested in more great Phaser 3 content, uh, please check out some of the videos that are on your screen now.